essay 580 details your written representations. Guys, we already have this as one of our general procedures for both class of transactions and account balances. So we always got to remember to put it down for one mark. Be specific to the assertion if the required is asking you for a specific assertion. But other than that, you can just say written representation for the balance the individual transaction or the class of transaction um, for the assertions that are applicable. Again, if a required asks you to audit one specific assertion, then it doesn't matter what of the assertions put that down for that specific assertion if you don't put your general procedures down. Just note, there's going to be a bit of a concern here. If management integrity lacks, we're going to place less reliance on these. And that was something we also noted when we were developing the audit plan. If we picked up initially that the integrity lacked, when it got to the extent of our procedures, we always made a note less reliance on representations if the integrity lacked. If they won't give us written representations, then we've got a scope limitation, and that, again, could affect our audit opinion. So I just want to take you to the standard quickly just so that you can see what's in it but we're not going to go into the detail of the standard because it's literally just one procedure I want you to note. So here we are, 580 written representations, and something I've highlighted is just that there's doubt as to the reliability. In terms of our requirements, is that we need to request written representations from management. One that we must definitely get is to provide us whether they've fulfilled their responsibility for the preparation of the financials, and then post that for completeness of transactions or for any other assertion, really. Okay, we can get a, a written representation from them. And then, yes, if there's doubt, then it could affect whether we want to rely on any representations that they've made to us. Okay, especially if there is inconsistencies with the representation and the evidence we're getting. And that could result in us having to change our opinion. Which we cover at a later stage. If they don't give us them, once we've requested it, again, this could be a concern with regards to the integrity, but also now a scope limitation, which is going to affect our audit report. Okay, and now, guys, we have finished with the auditing standards assistance in determining substantive procedures. Now we need to get into those general procedures and the examples of substantive procedures for each of the assertions. So I want you guys to now open the substantive procedure document that's in Col Campus and get your pen ready because we're going to start to put down substantive procedures for each assertion.